Welcome to all as we gather for worship this Sunday morning in the Lord's Day. Rather a comfortable day, a little humid, but not all that bad either. Want to welcome especially all of our guests. Lucille brought in a whole bunch of people. And uh, why would that be, Lucille? Well, we just found them. You just found them. All right. All right. <laughs> Uh, already well uh, for most of you you probably know but uh, uh, 90 years ago uh, God blessed this earth with Lucille and today is her birthday so we'll be celebrating her. we have a, an announcement this morning before we begin our worship from Nick our time of worship as we join in singing the hymn of invocation Lord Open now my heart to hear. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of the altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in His mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, to God on high. 
with you. Let us pray. O Lord of brilliant light, may we hear the warning of your law and yearn for your righteousness to pierce our darkness. Transform us with your great word and sacrament that your comfort and confidence may ever dawn greater by the glory of your grace through Jesus Christ who lives with Father and Spirit in one unity and perfect love. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the seventh Sunday after Pentecost is from Amos chapter 7, verses 7 through 15. It can be found in your bulletin and on page 977 in your pew Bible. This is what the Lord God showed me. Behold, the Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, behold, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass by them. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go flee away to the land of Judah and eat bread there and prophesies there, but never again prophesies at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, 
and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I was a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore figs. But the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord God said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. This is the word of the Lord. from Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 through 14 and can be found in your pew Bible on page 1240. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him, who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him, you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promise, Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. When King Herod heard her of Jesus, for his name had become known, some said John the Baptist had been raised from the dead. That is why these miraculous powers are at work in him. But others said, He is Elijah. And others said he is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. It was Herod who had sent and seized John and bound him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because he had married her. For John had been saying to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to put him to death, but she could not. For Herod feared John, 
knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he kept him safe. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he heard him gladly. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his nobles and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. For when Herodias' daughter came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it to you. And he vowed to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you up to half of my kingdom. And she went out and said to her mother, What did I ask? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. And she came in immediately with haste to the king and asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king was exceedingly sorry. But because of his oaths and his guests, he did not want to break his word to her. And immediately the king sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison and brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. And the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard of it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father. And was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we join in singing the first part of our hymn of the day. I'm told it's one of Lucille's favorite hymns.
As we celebrate the installation of the officers of Faith Lutheran Church, I invite all of those appointed, elected, and those who are continuing on in their offices and their time of service to please come forward. to just beloved in the Lord Holy Scripture admonishes us that all things should be done decently and in order and to that end, the Constitution and bylaws of this congregation establish various offices to which men and women are elected and appointed to serve. In so doing, the church follows the example of the early Christian church as described in the book of the Acts of the Apostles in chapter 6. The twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God, to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. You have been chosen to fill specific offices and positions of responsibility here at Faith Lutheran Church in Elma. You are to work with myself as the pastor and uh, whomever we call to be the next pastor that our life together in Christ may be orderly and pleasing in his sight. You are to see that the services of God's house are held at the proper times, that the word of God is purely preached and taught according to the Lutheran confessions and the sacraments of Christ are administered according to the Lord's institution, that provision is made for the Christian instruction of young and old, and that the erring are admonished and the discipline is maintained. You are to see to the temporal affairs of the congregation that they are properly administered and that proper support is provided for the workers of this congregation. You are to assist in caring for the poor and the sick in cultivating harmony among the members, in promoting the general welfare of the congregation, and in furthering the kingdom of Christ here and throughout the world. While holiness of life and obedience to Christ are expected of all members of the congregation, it is especially important that you, as office bearers in his church, show yourselves, by word and example, to be faithful to him in service and Christian devotion. Therefore, in the presence of God and of this congregation, I therefore ask you, do you accept the offices entrusted to you, and do you promise faithfully to carry out your duties, trusting in the Lord and conforming yourself to his word in accordance with the faith of the Evangelical Lutheran Church and if so, then answer, I do with the help of God. I do with the help of God. Beloved in the Lord, 
You have heard the promises of faithfulness spoken by these men and women whom you have selected to serve as officers of this congregation. And so I ask you, do you promise to support them in their work, to remember them in your prayers, and to work with them to the best of the abilities that God has given you, so that he may be glorified and his work be done in our midst? And if so, then answer, we do. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I install you as officers and office holders of this congregation of Faith Lutheran Church here in Elma in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty and most merciful God, enlighten and strengthen you in your offices, that you may be good and faithful stewards to the glory of his holy name and to the good of his people. Amen. I invite you please to rise now as we join our hearts and minds in a word of prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you that you have raised up these servants for work among your people. We humbly implore you to grant them by your Holy Spirit those gifts needed for the faithful carrying out of their tasks, most especially wisdom, strength, and willing hearts. Let your blessing rest on this congregation. Strengthen the faith, quicken the love, and enkindle the zeal of its members that your name may be glorified, and that here and in all places under heaven the kingdom of your Son may be advanced. We remember with thanksgiving those who have faithfully served your people and have now completed their time of service. We pray that in the end of days we, with all your faithful people, may hear the voice of Christ saying, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Go forth now in the name of the Lord. Be steadfast, be immovable always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. And the almighty and most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Normally, uh, I would shake everyone's hand, and we probably could do that still uh, today, but maybe just as a little precaution, why don't we just uh, join in a round of applause in endorsing their service. You may return to your seats. You may be seated as we continue the singing of the hymn of the day. Each command your master. 
The grace of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ be with us now and always. Amen. And may the power of God's Spirit work in and through his word this day and implant his word and will for us into our hearts. The word of God for us this day goes back once again as we did last week to the Old Testament, to one of the prophets. Last week we heard from the prophet Ezekiel, but this week we go back to the prophet Amos. Quite some time ago, and yet very, very relevant and applicable in our own daily lives. This past week at uh, Greenfields, in the rehab uh, portion of the facility, I happened to run into an old friend, or at least an old acquaintance, I guess you'd say. He was a member of the church where I received my very first calling, not far from here actually, at uh, St. Luke in Cheektowaga. I saw his name on the census report and I wondered, could that be the same one, I wonder? So I went looking for him and sure enough I found him with some of his family uh, he was actually outside visiting with them. Now, it, it had been a long time since we talked. I don't believe that Alan and I had talked or seen each other for well over 30, maybe almost 35 years or so. And so I have to admit, I wasn't quite sure that was Alan. Um, when I came up to him, it kind of looked like him, but... Uh, uh, things had changed just a little bit, and he, uh, he didn't know who I was either. That's probably because I had a mask on. <laughs> right. At any rate, um, so he must have picked up on that, and uh, when I introduced myself to him, I said, you're Alan Reamer, aren't you? He says, yeah, he said, and I can tell by the look on your face, I haven't changed a bit. <laughs> things do kind of change, don't they? Lots of changes. Uh, Lucille, in the last 90 years, have you seen a few changes? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll bet you have. In our own lifetimes, 30, 40, 50 or more years, we've seen many changes in ourselves. You look in the mirror, it's changed a little bit from what it was 50 years ago. Or you think about your own feelings about things and your own uh, attitudes. Society has changed drastically. My goodness, think about the whole realm of morality that has just changed tremendously. Just a few examples. There are many that we could probably uh, enumerate. But uh, think about a time when a majority of the people around us, the people of our land, were members of a church. How is it today changed? I would say, according to statistics, a majority of the people don't belong to a church. It's kind of sad to have seen that kind of change take place. How about television programming? Oh, man. Has that ever changed? The language on television has changed drastically. The content and the political agenda that gets pushed through television programming, boy, that has really changed. How about the legalization of marijuana? I know there's lots of opinions on that. 
But at a time when drugs were just considered, no, they're dangerous, they're not good for you, as well as many other things that some of those who would argue in favor of legalization of drugs uh, would say, well, what, uh, what about legalization of alcohol and so forth? And there's something to that. But I fear down the road one day, or do you think we're going to see the legalization of crack, coke, and meth? I wouldn't be surprised. Lots of things have changed, but a lot of things have not changed either. If you go back 2,700 years ago to the words of the book of the prophet we read in our Old Testament lesson from Amos, isn't it amazing? Those words are so relevant to our setting our circumstance to our society, to ourselves, even in 2021. Well, let's kind of get the context, the historical uh, background real quickly of where Amos is and why uh, he is, is going to Israel to proclaim uh, repentance and to proclaim the law of God. The northern kingdom and the southern kingdom had split up after King Solomon had died. And so you had uh, Judah in the south, you have Israel in the north, and uh, things had really, well, in, in some ways you might say they really had progressed. Things were going well. Crops were growing, the land was safe and secure from enemies, and it just seemed like everything was improving, kind of like America at times too, when we live in a land of abundance and we give thanks to God for that abundance. But ironically, right alongside with the growth of all the material wealth and all these other things comes the spiritual decline. They had become spiritually lazy and they fell into all kinds of sinful behavior. Do you see why this is so relevant to today. They began to worship false gods and in fact even established the place of worship in the northern kingdom that they had no authority to do. The only place you could offer thanksgiving and sacrifices and not, not worship God, you could pray to God anywhere, but to go to a temple and to worship and give thanks sacrifice to him was in Jerusalem at the temple of Solomon that was built there that at God's word. But they went ahead. They didn't want people from the northern kingdom to go down to the southern kingdom to Jerusalem. They wanted to keep them right up there. So they established not one but two in Bethel and in Dan and they appointed their own prophets and, and priests to serve at those temples. And so it is that setting now, and they're turning their back on the one true God who had always been with them, that God grows angry with them. And he sends this shepherd, this uh, vine dresser, or this uh, care, carer for sycamore uh, fig trees, and he sends this man to the kingdom of Israel to proclaim his word. And his word is one of law and judgment and doom. In our, gospel, or in our Old Testament lesson today, we have one of the visions that God gave him, but he'd given Amos other visions prior to this. One of locusts, locusts eating up everything, all the crops, and in a fire consuming everything in the north. It was a message of judgment and punishment. And now we get this other rather strange kind of vision. The vision of a plumb line. There's an arm, presumably the arm of God, holding out a plumb line. I know many of you know what a plumb line is, but some of you may not know what it is. Um, I don't know, Rod, you're very handy. You do all kinds of construction. What's a plumb line? Right, right. It, it's just a, a line with a weight on the bottom, and so when you hold it up, you get a true 
vertical guide to follow. And as you're building, say, a wall or a building, it gives you a, a true a vertical line and also one to build off of to make it square as well. You could use it in construction. I think they use it for maybe for wallpaper. Uh, the parsonage that we live in, it would be no good. Everything's kind of crooked anyway. But, <laughs> um, but that's just how older homes kind of get at times. But uh, he gives them this, he gives Amos this vision of a plumb line um, and likens it to his law. So what is he saying? This is the guide, and there's no variation from it. And as you look at what's perfectly uh, straight up and down or square in, in keeping with that, now you look at how crooked you have become in your life. My grandmother would have hated the sermon title for today. God's plum ain't dumb. She always told me, don't ever use that word ain't. Now it's in the dictionary, I believe. So that might help a little bit. But God's word speaks out loudly, and God's word ain't mute. It isn't quiet. God's law speaks loudly, and, and God enlists his prophet, his spokesperson, Amos, to take that message to the Israelites of the northern kingdom. He reveals his perfect and righteous will and reveals how out of line, or the word might be out of plumb, that they really have become. You know, I, I thought about it. I don't believe the Israelites thought it through and said, you know what, we're, we're tired of this plumb line, we're tired of God's law, we're just going to go our own way. I think it happened incrementally, as it does with us. You take a little liberty, you do this and that, and next thing you know, kind of like uh, the fellow I mentioned in the beginning of our message today, Alan, if I had seen him every couple of years, I would have recognized him right away. I would have seen the incremental changes and gone right along with it. I would have understood exactly who he was. I wouldn't have seen the, the real stark difference, or he see that in me, of not having seen each other for so long. And when we lose sight of God's law for a long time, where it's really at, we can drift away from it and hardly ever realize it. God's law is not dumb. It speaks loudly to us as we teach in Luther's small catechism. That's the first use of the law, to, to reveal to us God's will and the second uh, use of the law to reflect back like a mirror how sinful we have become and to call us into repentance. That's what Amos's job was. Now, how do people respond when you find out how out of plumb and how crooked you really are, how sinful you are? You pray and hope that people would repent and pray that God would forgive them and have mercy on them, just as we did already this morning. We see how oftentimes people respond differently, though. What do they do? They make excuses. They try to, to logically uh, explain away why their behavior is, is okay. They go through all kinds of mental gymnastics, and they might say, well, you know, God, the world is different today than it was when you gave your law, and so for that reason, it really doesn't quite apply uh, like it used to. God's law never changes. God never changes. We change. The world, the sinful world, is changing and it is on that course of, of destruction until that day when the Lord returns and it will be consumed. So that doesn't work. I don't care what kind of mental gymnastics you could be the best debater of all. You're not going to win against God's will and God's law. That stays constant. Or you might have another response uh, you might call it the uh, speeding uh, uh, ticket uh, argument. You've been speeding, the lights come up behind you, that's Prophet Amos getting out of his car, and he's going to say, roll down your window, right? And what are you going to say? Uh, well, 
officer, was I speeding? <laughs> um, I was just keeping up with traffic. I was just going with the flow. How oftentimes we seem to think that that's uh, uh, okay. To just go with the flow of a sinful world means what? That you're going with the flow of sinfulness. And that doesn't work at all. That's why the plumb line is so important because it calls us back to be true and swear with God and his will. Or worse yet, we might even say to God, well, okay, yeah, I can't. I, officer, I might have been speeding a little bit, but you know what? Did you see that guy blow right by me? Compared to others, I'm not all that bad. And sometimes we try that logic. Um, you know, hey, my friends are all doing it, and, and I didn't do that, but, but I'm a little better than they are, and somehow we think that's going to stand before God as well, and it does not. God's plum is not dumb. It's not mute. It speaks loudly to God's will, and that cannot be compromised. Now, Amaziah the so-called priest of the temple of Bethel in the northern kingdom, how does he respond? He chooses to ignore it. He just, uh, the priest of uh, Bethel, to his control and all the things that seem to have become so important to him. And so he enlists the help of Jeroboam, the king, and he actually lies. He says, uh, we got to get rid of this Amos. He's speaking against the land of Israel. He says, uh, Jeroboam, you're going to die by the sword. That, that was a lie. The house of Jeroboam was going to come to an end, and it would die by the sword of the nation of Assyria. They would come in, and they would conquer Israel, and they would uh, haul them away into captivity. Those they didn't kill, they would haul away, or they left some there, and they brought in Assyrians and mixed up the race, so the northern kingdom never, ever came back. And in fact, in the New Testament, we know that nation very well. Not called Israel anymore. That was the nation that Jew, Judah and, and the Jews wanted nothing to do with because they were a polluted people called the Samaritans. And God, true to his word, wiped them out. He punished them because of their hard-heartedness and their reluctance to repent and to be forgiven. What's the message for us today? You know the plumb line of God's law. You also see it in the world. You see how far away we have veered from being true to God's will, to his plumb line. And let's be a little more honest. D. I didn't even see it right away. Um, like a good Lutheran church, Missouri Synod boy, I saw Synod. <laughs> and then it hit me one day, oh my goodness. So I, I thank God for that name. Because my name backwards is my plumb line, in a way, to help me realize, you know, pastor, you're a sinner too. And you know, sometimes you really are out of line. And it's a call for me to repent of my sins and to pray for the power of God's Spirit to get back in line and to receive, of course, the grace and forgiveness of our Lord. May God so bless each and every one of us. Amen. Let us respond now. What a, a wonderful hymn to respond to the message from Amos today uh, as we join in singing Just a Closer Walk.
I'd like to sing the refrain again. How about you? Just a closer walk with thee. to pray. Let us pray for the whole church. Let us voice our gratitude and also carry out the commission for God's people to make intercession for the Lord's blessing. Almighty God, we lift our hearts in gratitude for all your loving kindness, for life and health, for love, for family and friendship, and for the goodness and mercy that have followed us all the days of our life. How we thank you for your Holy Spirit, the Counselor, for granting us the means of grace, and for the fellowship of the redeemed in heaven and on earth. Lord of the Church, we thank you for every believer in this family of faith, for those here and for those at home, for those in some way estranged from this close fellowship. Breathe on us, everyone, with new fire and zeal for your house, for joining others in service and grant great joy in the advancement of your kingdom. In response to your holy word and will, we pray for our local, regional, and national leaders. May your spirit enliven their consciences and press upon them the path of responsible search for solutions and moral rectitude, as well as defending all that is good and just in our republic. Lord, we pray for each other in need of your special blessing. Perfect our petitions now, dear Lord. We're so glad to seek your face and to ask for your intervention in our lives. We pray for Mark and Alice and Linda and Ron for Pastor Joshua and his wife, for Mildred and for Monica. We pray that each individual with their specific physical needs and their fight for health might sense your presence with them and that inner strength that only comes from you. We pray also for comfort for those who are facing possible uh, 
treatment for cancer, those who are lonely, those who seek you in the midst of great challenges. For Bill and Alice, for Margaret, for Dave and Joy Belasic, for Fred. And then we're glad also to celebrate special milestones in our life. Most important one being when you brought us to faith but then those we love who are celebrating other milestones. And so we pray for Lucille on this, her birthday. May you continue to grant her blessings beyond her imagination. So we again ask for all of those in the western New York area that are going through the process of a call. May you grant your presence and the details of, that, of all that is involved in that. So, we trust in you, Jesus, and your loving care. Most gracious Lord, we pray for the leaders who have been elected and appointed, whom you have called and, and gathered together in this place to lead the work of your church in this little corner of your kingdom. We pray for leaders of all churches, with such a, an awesome responsibility to carry on the work that you have called us into and be productive, effective, to do things decently and in good order as a witness to those around us. We pray for friends of mine, uh, Pastor Sippy and his family, as they grieve over the loss, uh, the death of uh, an adult son of sudden death, and we pray your comfort and strength upon them. We ask, Lord, also in this world of chaos and trouble, where there is so much violence and bloodshed, that uh, you would work in the hearts of people to seek out peaceful resolutions. We pray that there might be a way to curb the gun violence, not just in Buffalo, but in our neighborhoods perhaps, but throughout our land and throughout our world. We pray for the nation of Haiti that has also suffered much from gun violence, but now in the assassination of their president. We pray for their safekeeping and well-being. And we ask, O oh Lord, again for your comfort for those families who have lost loved ones in the building collapse in Florida May the spirit of your comfort minister to each and to every one of them. And for those who live in similar kinds of high rises that may be in danger, that you would watch over and keep them safe as well. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to bless us as we come out of this uh, pandemic, uh, that we are able to do so responsibly and safely, but that we might be able to resume uh, life as we knew it before the pandemic and that businesses and uh, uh, restaurants and all kinds of commerce might be restored and our economy rebuilt again. These things we lift up and we pray, Jesus, we trust in you and your loving care. So for this holy assembly, we pray, may we present ourselves as living sacrifices to God and as we commune around the table of our Lord, unite us in one body, holy and acceptable for service. Amen. As we continue with the service of the sacrament, I want to just alert you that on the top of page 10, when we join in praying the Lord's Prayer, this morning we will sing it according to the traditional melody I think most all of you will recognize. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, 
we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all of the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth adored, heaven and earth are full of pain. Shout the glory of your name. Sing Hosanna in the highest. Sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly, who comes in the Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you just, justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promise salvation by a second Adam, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us now as we sing and pray in his name as he has taught us. <clears throat> Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night when he was betrayed, took bread. 
And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to the disciples. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O oh, Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, you take the sin of the world away. O oh, Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, have mercy
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. We rise and serve. Now let your servant depart in heavenly peace, for I have seen the glory of your redeeming grace. All I to lead the Gentiles unto Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Together our hymn of departure, To God Be the Glory. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give 